Dinosaurs have been a topic of discussion since Sir Richard Owen coined the name dinosaur in 1842. Since Sir Owen's naming of these creatures, more than just the three he named have been discovered and named, with there being hundreds of species recognised, which isn't including the modern dinosaurs, aka the birds. In this video, I'll be going over what is possibly the most studied and definitely the most famous of all extinct dinosaurs to have ever walked the Earth, Tyrannosaurus rex, the apex predator of late Cretaceous North America and possibly the largest carnivorous dinosaur when talking about weight. Before I get into this video, however, I should note that most of this video is based on two articles from fossilguy.com. If I remember to, these and other articles used will be listed in the video description for your pleasure. Tyrannosaurus rex was discovered in 1902 by Barnum Brown, who took his findings to the American Museum of Natural History. Henry Fairfield Osborne, the president of the museum at the time, named it Tyrannosaurus rex in 1905. And even though this is considered the holotype, this isn't the first one found. Arthur Lakes in 1874 and John Bell Hatcher in 1890 separately discovered fossils in Colorado and Wyoming and believed it to be an ornithomimid called Ornithomimus grandus, meaning large or great bird mimic, which is now considered a dubious tyrannosaurid called Dinodon, and these remnants Lakes and Hatcher found were later reclassified as T-Rex. In 1892, Edward Drinker Cope found a couple vertebrae of what he believed to be at the time a ceratopsian dinosaur, which he named Manospondylus gigas, meaning giant porous vertebrae. Due to this being during the Bone Wars, however, Cope was busy trying to name more dinosaurs than Othniel Charles Marsh and never bothered to continue research on Manospondylus gigas. This dinosaur would be forgotten about until a hundred years later, which is when paleontologists went digging through what they believed to be the area where Cope found the vertebrae and found out it was Tyrannosaurus rex he had found. And as if we needed more of this, before he discovered what is considered the holotype, Barnum Brown himself in 1900 discovered a different T Rex specimen but believed it to be a completely different large theropod dinosaur. He later brought his 1900 finding to Osborne, sometime after he brought what was considered the T-Rex holotype to him. Osborne named the 1900 specimen Dynamosaurus Imperiosus, meaning Imperial Powerful Lizard. Osborne would later publish both T-Rex and D. Imperiosus in the same paper, but later realised his mistake upon further inspection of Dynamosaurus. Now you see, one thing to point out is that when naming animals, if you name something that already has a name, the older name takes place. But Osborne mustn't have bothered to ask when Barnum found these specimens, since he went off of which name he used first in the paper he published, and picked the first one, which was T-Rex, meaning D. Imperiosus was no more, despite its specimen being the first one found. This mistake wouldn't be realised until the year 2000, However, rather than simply just changing the name, the International Code of Zoological Nomenclature changed the rules a little, to basically say that if it's been used for more than 50 years and has X amount of media and scientific papers using the newer name by X amount of authors, it stays. Tyrannosaurus Rex filled out all of the requirements to no one's surprise. Pretty much since its discovery, Tyrannosaurus rex embedded itself in popular culture with some of the first dinosaur media featuring the animal. At the time, and even to this day, it remains as one of the largest known carnivorous theropod dinosaurs discovered, which was one of the many reasons that contributed to its popularity. You may be quick to argue that Spinosaurus aegyptiacus or Giganotosaurus carolini are bigger, however I beg to differ. Most weight estimates I've read and heard put T-Rex as being anywhere between 7 and 10 tons. Yes, one part of the Wikipedia page for Spinosaurus says 12 to 20.9 tons, but what about the others saying more conservative stuff at about 6 to 9.9 tons? And the same can be said for Giganotosaurus with its 13.8 tons estimate. 
in comparison to a bunch of others saying somewhere between 6 and 10 tons. Meaning that T-Rex is roughly even in weight with G. carolinae and S. aegyptiaicus, give or take a few hundred kilos. Of course, as more people get into paleontology and current paleontologists continue to dig up more fossils of these animals, we'll be able to get a better idea of how big these animals were, but for now, I'd say take a dump truck's worth of salt before believing someone found a theropod dinosaur heavier than T-Rex for now. T-Rex is a very robust, very wide animal, which when going off of designs such as that of Saurian's Rex, looks kinda like a hippo. So, even if most of its competition were larger in length and height, T-Rex will either match or surpass them in weight, since they aren't as robust. Besides the size, Tyrannosaurus is surprisingly slow if I'm going to be honest. While some estimates put the animal at a massive 74 kilometers, newer stuff says otherwise at 25 to 28 kilometers. However, according to FossilGuy.com, one study found that T-Rex might be even faster, and that it isn't just fast, but extremely agile as well. The tail didn't just act as a counterbalance for the head, but was in fact an attachment point for large muscles, meaning the animal had some horsepower about it and could turn reasonably well for an animal its size. According to the YouTube channel Wild World, where he referenced a lecture by David Hone he found online, even if T-Rex was slower than other large theropods, it seemed to be built for endurance. So it's not just a sprint, it's a marathon where a bloodthirsty animal larger than an African elephant is chasing after you. Alongside the speed and endurance, T-Rex has a massive bite force vastly more powerful than its peers' bite force. Giganosaurus is believed to have had a bite force a third as powerful at only 4000 to 4500 psi, in comparison to the mighty 2800 psi Tyrannosaurus wields. In comparison, Carcharodontosaurids might have the upper hand when it comes to causing prey to bleed out due to how sharp their teeth are, but I think it's safe to say they're going to bleed a lot more when T-Rex uses its bite force to take a large chunk of the size of a person out of them. Tyrannosaurids, unlike Carcharodontosaurids, were designed for crushing bone using their thick, muscular necks and their large, extremely strong skulls. Bite force aside, I think it's safe to say we can't move on without at least mentioning the absolutely tiny arms of this guy. The arms are extremely small in comparison to the rest of the body, however that doesn't mean they're as useless as a dementia patient as president. Comparable in size to a man's arm, but much thicker, a Tyrannosaurus arm is estimated to be able to hold roughly 400 pounds or 181.4 kilograms. According to Prehistoric Wildlife, it could be more at 440.9 pounds or 200 kilograms. Meaning that one of them could easily carry two of me on each arm and possibly still have enough strength for the weight of my sister on each arm as well. It's been debated what exactly it used its arms for, however there have been stress fractures found, which is different to breakage and are caused via excessive usage, indicating some form of purpose for these arms. Whether it be during mating to hold themselves steady during the process, to grip prey, or to help them get off the ground, it was using its arms for something. Overall, I think it's safe to say that Tyrannosaurus rex was the top dog of its ecosystem, and is possibly the most famous dinosaur known. And as a result of it becoming famous, this means that whenever something relating to it happens, it most likely makes the news and causes some controversy. Two examples I can think of first being the Nanotyrannus debate and the scavenger theory. The first one being the debate over whether or not a couple fossils found are in fact a new species, Nanotyrannus lancensis, or simply a juvenile version of Tyrannosaurus rex. According to Darren Nash's book, Dinopedia, a brief compendium of dinosaur lore, a 2020 study of the fossils' bone structure found that they are in fact juvenile Tyrannosauruses. However, people do continue to argue online about whether or not it's a valid species. Personally, from what I've read and watched online and offline, I'm in agreement that it's just a juvenile Tyrannosaurus rex, and that N. lancensis isn't a valid species. 
Really, what's most likely the case when it comes to juvenile T-Rex is that they ate other things, such as smaller, faster animals, while adults ate larger, slower stuff because they became larger and slower themselves. You can see this with Komodo dragons, where they start off eating insects, but move on to larger stuff like village children and pigs as they grow in size and strength. The scavenger theory, from what I know, was started up by famous paleontologist Jack Horner, which, from what I've heard, ranges from him doing it as a form of screwing around with his co-workers, to him actually being serious about what he's saying. Considering he made an entire documentary attempting to prove his theory, I think he's being serious. I haven't bothered to watch the documentary yet. However, I did check out Red Raptor Wrights' video and Rick Raptor 105's video on the documentary, and as they put it, the argument he puts forth is rubbish. Really, I don't need to go into the argument to tell you it's rubbish. Realistically, it doesn't make sense for an animal to be a dedicated scavenger or predator. Carnivores are designed to eat meat and will eat whatever meat they can find. Wedgetail eagles of Australia, for example, are opportunistic feeders eating roadkill such as kangaroos and are also known to hunt stuff as large as adult kangaroos. Lions are widely considered one of the fiercest predators out there, but 40 to 50% of their diet is from scavenging carcasses which adds to the list of reasons why I believe tigers are superior to lions. However, you'll probably find that tigers scavenge just as much. The reality is that it's a bad idea to be a strict scavenger or predator, especially when you weigh more than a Panzer I light tank. Food is food, which is the same reason you might see stuff like videos or images of supposed herbivores eating meat. These aren't the only two controversies relating to or involving the Tyrant Lizard King, however. Tarbosaurus Batar has been heavily debated as being a Tyrannosaurus subspecies or being its own animal. According to prehistoric wildlife, the original specimens were split into different subspecies of Gorgosaurus and Tyrannosaurus, however later turned out to be the same animal at different stages of growth. And you may still see arguing to this day over whether or not it's its own species or a subspecies of an already known Tyrannosaurid. On top of that, earlier this year there was the proposed idea that Tyrannosaurus is actually three different subspecies instead of one distinct species. Based on teeth arrangement and femur size, they named two new subspecies, Tyrannosaurus imperator and Tyrannosaurus regina, and kept the old name for the third, Tyrannosaurus rex. The belief being that it started out with the larger, bulkier, primitive T Imperator, but then split into two more advanced species in the form of the slimmer T Regina and T Rex. The authors of the study were quickly and heavily criticised, with numerous experts saying the differences aren't enough to divide the 38 specimens analysed into three different subspecies, and the authors didn't exactly help themselves in that regard when it came to those specimens, since several are in private collections, meaning other paleontologists can't test all of the 38 specimens for themselves to see if they get the same results. According to a life science article I briefly read through, one of the authors, Philip Curry, from the University of Alberta, Canada, quickly dropped his name from the study before it was even published, which goes to show the sort of stability he thought the study had in the first place. Another one of the authors, Gregory S. Paul, claimed that if this happened with a different dinosaur, no one would care. Whether that's a fair point, or him not having much of an argument to back up the claim, I have no clue. Though I'm more so thinking the latter, since from what I heard, him and the others came out saying they themselves no longer believe the study is valid. Though I can't remember where I heard that, so he might actually still believe the theory and recognise Tyrannosaurus as being three subspecies. Other debates about the animal have also been over the presence of feathers. Personally, I don't think it would have had feathers, since it's a large animal that would just irradiate heat if it lived in an environment like the one it's shown living in, in 2022's prehistoric planet. Like me, irradiating light in the dark after eating some uranium-235 for breakfast. However, that doesn't mean there's a chance they might have been partially feathered or had a small layer of dino fuzz. Yes, 
A relative of Tyrannosaurus was found to have feathers about 8 inches long, pretty much all over its body, but it lived in a very chilly area where there were plenty of harsh winters, so it most likely evolved this as a way to try and cope with said winters. Besides those topics, of course you have the arguments of pretty much whatever dinosaur they literally dig up versus Tyrannosaurus rex. Spinosaurus aegypticus and Giganontosaurus carolinae being good examples of this, as I somewhat mentioned earlier with the trope of a theropod being larger than T. rex. And you'll probably find this petty dino nerd male sex organ measuring contest will continue until humans go extinct, and then will continue when another form of intelligent life discovers them. Personally, Based on bite force, size, speed, agility, and endurance, I think T-Rex is the clear winner until we dig up more specimens of G. Carolini and S. Aegypticus, which will allow us to understand more about their speed, size, bite force, agility, and endurance. But for now, as much as I myself like talking about these comparisons, I think we should move on and actually focus on them as actual animals, rather than just one another's punching bags. And the same can be said for Lion vs Tiger, Baldy vs Wedgie, and many other comparisons like the utterly stupid Grizzly Bear vs Gorilla comparison. Anyway, I hope everyone enjoyed watching my attempt at a paleontology video. I do hope to at some point in the future cover some dinosaurs I mentioned here, but we'll see how that goes. If this did get you interested in learning about dinosaurs, I recommend checking out Fossil Guy's article on Tyrannosaurus or others they have, such as Triceratops, Edmontosaurus, and Spinosaurus. The man behind the website does a great job at researching these animals, and you'll probably see me use some other articles of his as sources in the future when making videos on these animals. Alongside that, I recommend Darren Nash's Dinopedia, which I found to be a fun book to casually read through. From A to Z, he goes over numerous dinosaur clades and dinosaurs within said clades, and numerous other things such as paleontologists and dig sites. Honestly, I wish he comes out with a more in-depth version of this book that goes into much greater detail and has a lot more to offer on top of everything he's already talked about in it. And prehistoric wildlife, despite looking like it was created around the same time the Bismarck was sunk, was also pretty interesting to read through as well, and has a wide variety of dinosaurs to read about. Websites, videos, and books I read through in preparation for this video will be listed in the description. Like, share, subscribe, I'll see you next time I make a video.